Hello! Welcome to this review of iOS 8 and its features along with some apps that were built specifically for the platform. In this review I will be outlining the new features that are present in iOS 8 as well as a couple of other features that you might find of interest. iOS 8 was released on September the 17th at about 10 a.m. Pacific time. So without wasting any further time, I'll jump right into it. This is one of the new wallpapers that is available in iOS 8. Once you open up iOS 8, you are greeted with a very familiar uh, outline. You have your messages, calendar, notes, reminders, everything that was there in iOS 7. In addition to this, however, you also get the option of having a new app called Tips. Find iPhone is also installed by default in iOS 8. The new tips app, here you can scroll through some tips that you might find useful. New ones are being added every single week by Apple. In addition to this, we also have the Find iPhone app available, which you already know from the iOS 7 operating system. If we look over towards the settings, we can see that some things have definitely changed. For one, we can see that there are some new icons. We have new icons for display and brightness, as well as passcode. One of the most interesting is the option for keyboards. You can just click the icon for keyboards, and then select a new keyboard if you wish to use one. Here's how you would go about finding a new keyboard that you would like to install. First, you would want to visit the new App Store. Browse for a specific keyboard that you might like. For example, a very popular one is SwiftKey. SwiftKey will download. But in the meantime, let's see what's new in the App Store. First of all, Apple has introduced bundles. Bundles are a quick new way of downloading sets of apps at a very low price, or lower price than if they were bought separately. Currently, Apple has about 30 app bundles available for sale, ranging from things like DJ to Science and more. This operating system also allows developer to include videos. So what we can do is if we browse for the best new apps, we can find one that's interesting like Yahoo Weather and play a short video of it. This is a really neat new feature if you would like to find out more about an app. Now, in iOS 8, Apple has given developers full control over manual exposure and manual focus, so there are several new apps that you can use, as well as existing ones that have been updated. In fact, the majority of your apps you will find will need to be updated to work in iOS 8 properly. For example, this app here will allow you to remotely capture images, as well as adjust your focus also, games look much better in iOS 8 because of the Metal Engine which makes them run a lot faster. Now back to keyboards. SwiftKey keyboard, you would just tap it once and then it will open up. Programs like these will usually give you a short dialogue telling you to go into your settings and install a new keyboard. This is very easy. All you have to do is go into your settings go under keyboards, add new keyboard, and then add SwiftKey as a keyboard. Then you will be able to see that SwiftKey is properly installed. If you would like additional features, however, a possible lack of privacy, then you can enable full access in the settings. The same thing and the same procedure is for all keyboards as well. So if you wanted to install a keyboard like Flexi, that's very simple to do as well. Now I've gone through earlier and picked out a couple of keyboards which I liked. Here are two that I really find interesting. One of them is Stack. And what Stack allows you to do is, even though the app is just, it does nothing, uh, if you open up an application such as Pages, we are greeted with the default keyboard which is now improved with predictive typing.
Now, what we can do is just using this wheel, we can press and hold and select my script, which is one of the most interesting I found. What my script allows you to do is it allows you to write on your screen instead of actually typing. What you can do is you can write, and if you're slow typing uh, and you're fast at writing, then this might be the app for you. And all you have to do is uh, say uh, like this, and then space. Oh, I made a mistake. What do I do to remove that mistake? I just slide to the side. And there we go. Another great keyboard that I discovered is SwiftKey. SwiftKey offers the same kind of predictive typing that Apple does. However, it's in a slightly better frame and apparently it learns from you. So it's the same thing that you would expect from Apple's keyboard, except it's purported to be better. Flexi is definitely a keyboard that I would be very interested in. However, it does have a few quirks. First of all, it sits a lot lower on the screen, which means that if you're accustomed to typing on a normal iPad keyboard, this might not be the app for you. The other thing is it has a couple of complicated gestures, which I'm sure if you get to know this program, you will get to learn. For example, to go back and delete words entirely, you can do this or press and hold to continue deleting. You can move forward individual spaces, which is something that many people had issues doing in the past, so that's a good feature. And if you wanted to make the keyboard smaller, then you would just slide down with two fingers. This way you can actually add spaces by using this kind of motion. This might be useful for some people who have not quite mastered the iPad keyboard yet. However, for me, my favorite keyboard by far is Apple's default. Apple's default keyboard now comes with predictive typing and the autocorrect is much improved. If you already know how to type on an iPad, this is definitely the keyboard for you. Getting back to performance now, I've shown off a lot of the features. I've shown off the new Tips app, part of the new App Store, as well as some third-party keyboards that I find interesting. However, there are a whole bunch of new features, including Spotlight. Spotlight now will search maps, restaurants, and many of the other things that Siri could do. And talking about Siri, she also now has direct typing input. Hello Siri, I am right now doing a review. What Siri did there is she transcribed my words as I was speaking. I am right now using the real-time transcription service that Siri offers in iOS 8. It is a welcome addition, especially since this feature has been on some Android phones. One other thing that's quite cool is in the notification center you can now download widgets. These widgets, if you swipe down from the top, you can actually click this edit button here. So now I've switched over onto the iPhone and we're going to click that edit button and now we can select Evernote as a widget. And now that Evernote is there, we can see that it offers us with a couple of options, including text, camera, photos, all very useful things to do without having to leave your notification center. These are widgets, and I'm sure there are more to come. There are a whole bunch of performance issues, though. I'm on an iPad 3 Retina display, and one thing that I've definitely noticed is that there is some lag and the device is slowing down. For example, if I wanted to go from this landscape orientation into a portrait orientation, notice that it does take a little while to revert itself. Uh, definitely a bit more than if I was running on iOS 7. Another thing is, um, this side-to-side -side movement isn't really all that fluid anymore. Um, it feels almost a little bit uh, like the jello effect. This isn't the DSLR causing the jello effect. That's the actual screen. So it is lagging behind a little bit. Another thing that I've noticed in iOS 8 is that some of the animations are not quite as smooth. For this particular app, if I wanted to close it, I would usually do a four-finger pinch. And there is a little bit of noticeable delay. Uh, this may not seem huge at first glance, but after you've been using your iPad for a while uh, on iOS 7, you will start to see a little bit of a performance drop. It is definitely something that you want to consider. The same thing applies on the iPhone for iOS 8. However, there are a couple of new features in iOS 8 for iPhone as well. For one, Touch ID seems to have been much improved. I can just put my finger down and it opens almost instantly. 
Some new apps, such as 1Password, will allow you to use Touch ID to get into their systems and their apps. As you can see here, it is requesting for my fingerprint. And there we are. One Password isn't the only app to use Touch ID. Browse the iPhone App Store to see more apps that take advantage of this new technology. iOS 8 also has an incredibly powerful browser in the form of Safari. Safari will contain all of your bookmarks at a glance, but it will also be able to search for spotlight information as well. For example, if I wanted to search for something like a maps or a directions, then I can actually type for a direction. Then I would just type or speak directions to New York. Another thing that is different between iOS 8 on the iPad and iOS 8 on the iPhone is the inclusion of a new health app on the iPhone. In this new health app, you can see all the information about your body at a glance. It includes several different fields, including weight, height, and other attributes such as calories eaten. This health app will correspond with other apps such as MyFitnessPal, Pacer, along with a whole bunch of other fitness-related apps that are available on the App Store today. MyFitnessPal, in particular, does have very good integration with the health app. Anything that you've logged that you've eaten on that day using this app will automatically be ported into the health app and then tabulated to get a comprehensive review of your health. All in all, iOS 8 is an incredibly powerful operating system and I'm sure that you will enjoy using it. It is a free update and in order to update your phone you just need to go into your settings and then go into general, software update, and see if there's anything new. This has been a Joral Techie review. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again in another video.